you're now tuned in to Body Dipshit's exclusive content. This is a three-part interview with Jared Weisfeld, ODB Last Manager. Before we jump into the interview, Body Dipshits want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. What is Galaxy Wells? Galaxy is the metaphor which represents infinite space. Their goal is to dominate the infinite space in the digital publishing universe. Wells are the major corporation that possess endless amounts of content. What do they do? They turn content into currency in the digital space, the home of the NFTs. You want to keep your ownership and intellectual property? Then stop what you're doing and go to galaxywells.com. Now I'm back to Buy the Dipshits. This is another episode of Buy the Dipshits. It's where the dip creates the opportunity. I'm Mills. I'm De La Marge. I'm JC. Today's episode, he was rap superstar, legend, old dirty bastard, a.k.a. Dirt McGirt, last manager, Jared Weisfeld. So the question was, do we work with him? Or do we not? Right? And I'm going to be honest with you. It was more so like the not. Right. Right. So we kind of stopped going to the recording studio. Um, you know, things like started calming down a little bit. So we were going on the road a lot. Well, he was going on the road a lot. I, I stopped after the, I had enough after the first road trip. I couldn't do it anymore. So you hired um, a road manager? Did not hire a road manager. What I did was I hired a bodyguard. Gotcha. So a bodyguard went on the road with him. Um, and so did Buddha Monk. And so the first, <laughs> this, uh, so the first time we go on the road, right? It's me, Dirty, and the, uh, and Buddha in the, uh, in the, in the tour bus, right? And now I know, like, Dirty was not one of those guys that had, like, a million things on his rider. Like, the only thing we ever asked for was, like, water. It was literally just water. And no alcohol allowed anywhere near him. So we were completely just watered up. So we get, we get on and, and like we stayed in like the cheapest hotels, whatever hotels they wanted to put us in. If they were five-star hotels, we'd stay there. If they were one-star hotels, we'd stay there. Like we didn't really care, right? We, we weren't trying to be like, we weren't trying to, to be like fancy kind of people. It was like, wherever you want to put us, you put us and that's where we'll stay. So we had three hotel rooms for the first show. And uh, so, so stop off in brooklyn to pick up i think uh, actually buddha wasn't with us we stopped off in brooklyn to pick up buddha so i'm just sitting there they're already sitting in the back and like 15 people get on the bus i shit you not 15 people right get on the bus and i recognize buddha of course and then um i whisper in buddha's ear i go well which which two do you need to come with us right and he goes well that's the dj and that's uh that's the guy that performs with us and i was like okay I was like, you two guys, come here for a second. I was like, you guys got your stuff and everything? And they were like, yeah, I go, the rest of you get the fuck off the bus. And they were like, what? I was like, get the fuck off the bus. Because now remember, I'm telling you, I know that these, like, they're hanger honors everywhere. So I was like, everybody off now. And they're all like yelling and screaming at me. And Dirty like comes up and he goes, what's all the commotion about? And he goes, I was like, uh, man, like, these guys, they won't like get off the bus. And they're like, yo, Dirt, man, he told us to get the fuck off the bus. And Dirt looks at them with a straight face and he goes, why the fuck you still here? And they go, what? He goes, get the fuck off the bus. Wow. And he got off the bus and I whispered in his ear. He's like, why'd we just throw him off the bus? I was like, dude, three hotel rooms. You're getting your own. <laughs> I'm getting my own. Like, where the fuck they going? <laughs> wow. And he was like, good call. And then he went in the back. And then, you know, he did his show. Like, our thing was he did his show, and they'd be like, oh, we got all this stuff for you. I was like, we just want water. And they were like, why? I was like, because he's going to do the show, and then we're going to get out of here. And they go, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, we're not staying. We're leaving. And uh, we left after every show. We just left. And then we got done with the first show. We got done with the first tour. We went back to, to Brooklyn, and, uh, and then we planned uh, another tour. So what it was, was like, he had child support payments he had to make every month, right? So everybody was saying, you know, you're putting him out on the road too fast. He's not ready. He's not ready. But 
he and his mom, we had a talk about it. We're just like, he's, if he doesn't pay child support, he's going to go back to jail. So she was, I was like, we got to have him on the road. She's like, I agree a hundred percent. Like, I don't want him to go back to jail for like not paying child support. So we had a monthly nut and we would make that nut every month by doing shows and then we'd have excess. Right. So, I, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but like he was a grown man, but his mom and I were so strict on him. I think he's like, we gave him an allowance of money that he was allowed to use because we were really trying to keep him on the straight and narrow. And I think it was like, I'm not lying to you. I think it was like 25 to $50 a day. So, and it wasn't for like, if you needed food, that was something else. Right. But spending money, it would be 25 or $50 a day to keep him out of trouble. And I know that sounds like, Oh, like you guys are like, I'm an evil person for doing that. Nah, but, that was like, almost like when you get on a road, which is per dim, when a label send you out on the road, they give you a per dim of like 30, yeah. 40, 50 bucks. So. so me and his mom were like, let's just give him like $25, $30 a day, you know? So we gave him like, he had like a debit card and it only it had like a limit of $25, $30 a day on the, on the card. And, and we did that for a while because we, you know, we did that actually for, for a long time, actually for the entire time. And, uh, but, you know, you, you know, he was doing, he, he, you know, it, it, sometimes in, in life, if, if you want to do things right, you're, you're going to do them no matter what, there's only so much human beings can do to, to stop somebody. Nice. And, and, you know, you, you do your best, you, you the best you can. And, and if it works out great, if it doesn't, um, then that's, that's a problem. But at that point, that person decided to, to go down that road themselves. You've done everything you possibly could, right? There's nothing more you could do. So speaking of health, right? We do this, you know, segment on our show called Healthy Mares. I'm gonna let JC pretty much kind of fill you in on how that goes. Jay. This is the Healthy Nair segment. It's a lifestyle where your health becomes your greatest asset, whether you're a hundred nair, a thousand nair, a millionaire, or even a billionaire. See, when you take the time to invest in your health, your true wealth is determined on how you nourish yourself. And that's what makes you a healthy nair. What's up, guys? Jared, I didn't get a chance to ask you. Um, when you came up with the show, right? You know, what was your goal when you came up with the whole VH1 show? I want to, you know, kind of take it back there. My, my goal was to show somebody that, that came out of prison and turned their life around, got a record deal, got a clothing line, and was able to, like, have a happy ever after life. Um, that was my goal. My goal wasn't what a lot of people thought it was, was to be like, okay, let's make this like a train wreck a show get the highest ratings possible right let's see how bad we could ruin this guy's life it was a complete opposite right i wanted the show to be based on you know seeing somebody succeed vh1 wanted the show to be based on somebody that succeeded but i feel like some people out there felt as though you know the show was set up to make him seem like a clown and nobody take him seriously and that you know it was kind of like it was insulting him Right. Um, which if you watch the show, it definitely was not insulting him. It showed showed somebody that uh, showed him in a positive light, the light that I wanted him to be in. It was, it was it was on pro with ODB. And afterwards, you know, you saw other shows that were that were similar, right, that had similar similar things in nature, like trying to help people. I will say, though, that we did a spinoff show at uh at MTV. It didn't get picked up, but we, we filmed a pilot for it, but it was funny. So, um, so MTV had this, uh, so I, I said to MTV, they're like, Oh, you know, will dirty come to the MTV awards and, and walk the red carpet. I was like, he's got to be home by like nine. They were like, what? I was like, yeah, he's got a curfew. You know, he's on parole. He's got a nine o'clock curfew. And they go, well, will he walk the red carpet? I was like, huh? I was like, I got one better for you. They said, what? I was like, how about he and his parole officer, they, uh, they give somebody a trophy, you know, the two of them get up there and you know, they're, they're, they're giving out awards. What about how the two of them do that? And, uh, they were like, uh, let us think about that. So they came back and they were like, yeah, no, that's not going to work. You know, we have all that lined up. 
they're like, will you do the red carpet? I'm like, they go, will you come to the show? And so they sent us two tickets. And mind you, this is a guy that's doing a show at MTV, like a pilot. He's, he's in the process of shooting it. They sent us like two tickets with like a bill. I call them up. I'm like, so guys, just so I'm clear, you want us to come to a show that we can't go to. And you want us to pay about $1,000 a ticket for a show we can't go to? And they were like, uh, I was like, do you make all your MTV stars pay, you know, $1,000 a ticket? And uh, they were like, oh, no, 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 we'll get that waived for you. We'll get that waived. I was like, you know what, guys? Like, I don't think we're going to do the red carpet. I don't think we're going to come to the, you know, let, let us, uh, we're just going to do our own thing. You know, he doesn't, because we knew what they wanted. They want him on the red carpet. I, I don't think he did the red carpet. I know he did the red carpet for something else. But like, when you put old dirty bastard on the red carpet, right? You want something outrageous to happen. You know, that wasn't what he was about in his later years, right? He never, you never really see, seen him do anything crazy towards the end of his life, right? It was, he was just like quiet and you never heard, you know, you never heard about him. So that was the goal. And there were people that were, like I said, there were people that are really, really protective of him, like the uh, Peter Frankel, right? Who kept a really close eye on me because he didn't want me exploiting Dirty. So he kept a, like a really close eye on me to make sure that I had Dirty's best interest at heart. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm glad he did that. You know, uh, I mean, he's a true, he's a lawyer that not only cared about his, I mean, he cared about his client, right? Like he didn't want him going back to jail, but you know, Dirty is one of those people that like, you can't help but like, love him. He's just like a, he's, he's just like the nicest person. He's the complete opposite of what you see on television. I mean, it's, it's, you know, or, or the radio or, or whatever it may be. It was all an act. I mean, I've seen him do some of the funniest things. Like somebody wanted to interview him, right? And he realized like the interview wasn't going the way that he wanted to, that he wanted it to. He would like close his eyes and pretend to fall asleep. And then just be like, I'm tired. You know, Jerry, can you finish it up? And he'd like leave. And I'd say to them, you know what? Like he's exhausted. You know, now's not a good time. Because he knew nothing good was going to happen out of that interview. So he, uh, he, he knew when to bail and when not to. They say he was the heart of Wu-Tang. So... By the dipshits, want to thank our sponsors. Sienna sauce is the great tasting, health-conscious everything sauce. Offering four flavors. Sweet and tangy, lemon pepper, spice it up, and the new flavor, smoky brown. Can be used on meat, seafood, poultry, and vegetables. No high fructose corn syrup and gluten-free. Order your Sienna Sauce today at SiennaSauce.com. And remember to live, love, and sauce it up. Now I'm back to buy the dipshits. They say he was the heart of Wu-Tang. So it's, it's kind of like you, you lost the heart and soul of your group. It's kind of like, how could you ever achieve the same success when you're missing the heart? So like you, you showed up to a Wu-Tang concert, right? You wanted to hear the music, but you want to see what Dirty was going to do. He was the heart. And if you notice, they, they haven't been the same since, since he passed. I'm sure you also see all over the place that, you know, that they blame certain individuals for why he's not here and whatnot. But truth of the matter is, is, you know, Dirty, Dirty was a grown man, right? And Dirty made his own choices. You know, it's, it's, it's hard for, for somebody like Dirty, for example, he never left the Wu-Tang Clan. He just right. did what every other member of the group did. He had a solo career. He was signed to Electra Records. He joined Rockefeller Records. He didn't join like, another group, right? You don't like leave Wu-Tang Clan and, and go join the Fugees, right? Right, he, right. He literally left uh, to, to get a solo career. That was it. Right. right. And somehow it turned into like this whole big thing that he disrespected Wu-Tang and this and that. And he and I just like looked at each other. We're like, what is everybody talking about? He's like, I used to be on Electra Records. Now I'm on Rockefeller. Like, what's the difference? And right. Exclusive content. Bye, bye the dipshits.